So I want to address a few things that people have kind of been making snide comments about. First thing, there's a few people talking about there's some rust on the outside of my decapping dies. The inside of this die is perfectly clean. What happened was I had a house fire and all these were in the basement, so they got moisture on. They're clean on the inside. They just don't look great on the outside. But guess what? The outside has no importance for what we're doing whatsoever. Um, next thing, there was somebody talking about crimping on a 3030. This goes in a tube magazine. Don't crimp them and find out what happens. I mean, come on. Um, next issue people had was me using this thing. I have a thing for doing powder measurement. That's It works. It's fine. But when I sit here and I'm reloading, this works better for me for most things. Especially when I go to like an extruded powder. Yeah, extruded powder. Because how this works is there's a cup in there. And you tip it up and it pours down the cup and it might stick up a little bit above the cup. So now we're cutting the powder. Every time you move this, it is going to cut a pellet of powder. So when you use a long extruded powder, this actually isn't the ideal situation for it because you are breaking the powder pellets. That's why I use this for 95% of what I do because for me, this works. Um, on to the next question. People ask why I don't anneal. This is all range brass. Or um, these are actually for a buddy of mine. These are rounds that he shot um, plinking with his kids. I'm not going to anneal brass that's free. Especially when I have a lot of brass. This whole setup overview is for the average at home reloader. You can buy an annealer that's fairly cheap. I get that. But what I show is the everyday guy that wants to reload at home. And then, then it came to, well, I use poor quality brass. <laughs> that's Lapua brass there for my Lapua. Good rounds require good brass. This is Winchester brass or Remington brass because it's for a 30-30. I'm in Iowa, we can't even use 30-30s for deer hunting. We can use them for coyote hunting and plinking. Why would I go out and get expensive brass or the guy I reloaded these for, why would he go buy expensive brass to go target practice? So which brings me to my next thing. There was some people that uh, we're, we're saying that crimping isn't uh, necessary. So half of these are for my AR Platform 22250 and the other half are for my bolt action. And they both shoot fairly good out of each one, but accuracy wise, these ones are better on my bolt action and these ones are better out of my AR Platform. They're all crimped because here's the deal. I go coyote hunting, this whole box gets thrown in my truck because if I'm making a long range shot, I use my bolt action. Because my AR platform has my infrared scope on it and I'm not gonna change them back and forth. So this whole box gets loaded and thrown in my truck. Now let's say we go somewhere and we get on them. I don't want to run the risk of A, in transport, one of these bullets banging off the side just a little bit rattling and slowly pushing the bullet in. That's number one why they're crimped. Number two, if I use all these up and I load my AR with these, an AR-10, even in 22250, has some thump to it. You, theoretically, even with decent case tension and blah, 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 if you want to sit down and figure all that out, you can still move this bullet slightly, especially in a semi-automatic operation. That's why everything I do, for the most part, is crimped um, I don't use a single stamping let's see them are Hornaday's them are PPU's guess what I'll take both these cases and they will shoot almost the exact same hole at 250 yards because every one of these bullets is weighed every load of powder is individually weighed I weigh the primers 
the casings really don't matter a whole lot because I can tell when I size them if there is a thickness difference. If there's a thickness difference one way or another, if it's too easy or too hard, that case gets thrown away. That is my, my check through for the casings because the other thing with the casings is when they get bad or if they have a ding or a crack, I just throw them away. I don't get all bent out of shape because I have enough casings. This is just my 22250 for coyotes. That's all this is. This isn't my 22250 for plinking. This isn't my 22250 for um, if I'm gonna go prairie dog hunting or anything like that. This is just coyote rounds. These are rounds that I like to shoot coyotes and these are accurate to 500 yards. Like I had to have no issue down the coyote at 500 yards with these. I wouldn't think twice about it. There's an awful lot of guys doing monkey see monkey do on this stuff you know some big name uh box store uh channel says that you need to anneal them so now all of a sudden everybody thinks that everybody needs to anneal them that's not the case uh, my grandfather taught me how to load and he was been loading since the 50s 95 percent of all the rounds i've ever shot in my life unless it was a 22 or most of the time 223s we just bought store-bought rounds because we're just plinking have all been anything like 30-30, 30-06, all that stuff had been hand-loaded. And never once have we had a accuracy issue or um, a functionality issue. And this is the way it has always been done. This is the way he did it. This is the way I've been doing it. And I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, when I was little, I would help my grandpa. I would wipe down the brass when it came out of the tumbler. I don't use the tumbler because I don't care if my brass looks pretty because it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the outside appearance, same as the dies, the outside appearance has no issue with the functionality of it. So that's why I just sonic clean it. Um, a couple of my videos, you can see there is some sonic clean junk in the primer pocket. Some rounds I will double clean after I decap them. The majority of the time if they're plinking, I don't because it gets cleaned out when I clean the primer pocket out. I don't care about it. It's not a big deal. It does not affect anything. The flash hole is clean. The primer pocket's clean. Everything's tight. Now, for these guys talking about neck tension and blah, 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 I have messed around with neck tension and I have not seen a benefit from it. Compared to now, there is a benefit to neck tension. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is um, 338. The dies I have for this, I can set the neck tension. My 300 uh, PRC, I can set the neck tension. But that's how those dies come. Average guy, if you're going to buy these dies here these are just my normal everyday dies these aren't my fancy ones well i mean i other my 338 the pool but i changed that die out a little bit if you're buying these dies you are not getting stuff to neck tension them you are going into a box store and you are buying this you are buying powder you are buying bullets you are going to get yourself a press some sort of way to measure powder and something to clean brass something to do some trim in something to clean out some primer pockets and you are going to load and in my personal opinion, you are going to factory crimp because when all else fails, this factory crimp sets your neck tension, which the dies should be pretty good at it, you know, because they are reputable dies. They're not Hong Chong Chinese Alibaba dies. But I crimp it. Again, this is 3030. You have to crimp a 3030 in a tube magazine. If you do not crimp it, you are going to have issues and lots of them. I've seen it happen. So that's why 2250. In my bolt actions, I don't have to crimp them, but I do because there is a chance that it's going to rattle around in this box for a month during coyote season. Or I'm going to take the ones for the bolt action and I'm going to use them in the AR because I ran out of ones for the AR and I didn't restock this box yet because I don't try to keep it full because I don't want that many rounds with me. So again, 
I neck crimp. 223, it's going in AR. Anything with the sum automatic action, just neck crimp it. Don't rely on case tension unless you are going to spend, this is 40 bucks. If you're gonna spend $120 to get a full setup to neck tension every brass that you have, because that's the thing that people aren't telling you when they neck tension, that they're running all the same brass. You can't go to your local range and get some sweep up brass and clean it because you are going to spend more time messing with the neck tension because if the case thickness is off just a little bit, now all of a sudden your neck tension isn't gonna work. You're actually, I've seen it, I did it once on a 338. It was cheap brass, but I was just reloading a couple plinking rounds um, for a gender reveal deal and it actually folded right here because of the case thickness was different so that being said if you want to go off case tension on 30-06 you better have all Winchester 30-06 brass or be very very mindful in measuring every casing that you run again I'm I wasn't trying there's a couple guys that got kind of annoying on the comments because Again, this is how I do it. I'm not a bench shooter because I can't act like I know everything, even when I don't. So I could never be a bench shooter. Am I a pretty good shot? I think so. I wouldn't want to stand down range for me in, in, in an instance where, you know, that was the case. I feel I'm, I'm a fairly good shot. You know, I've pushed this out past 1,000. I hit pie plates. That's a pretty good shot to me. And I don't have issues with accuracy the way that I load them. So these guys that get on here and say, you need to do it this way. It's been done exactly these dies, this process. You know, this thing is way older than me. This is what my grandpa, I got this from my grandpa. This is what he used. You know, this system, essentially, this, this was my grandpa's too. I mean, this is what he used. This system is how I did it. Some of these dies were his. it works i'm not going to change what i've learned over my entire life for rounds that essentially are going to be plinking and if you need to rely on them why would you not factory crimp them again this right here and everything that i've done hunting wise target practice and long long range shooting this right here easily substitutes for taking a master class on neck tension. If you are not going to bench shoot, do not worry about buying three different neck tension collars for your die. Get a factory crimp die, make sure your brass isn't completely wore out and junk, put a bullet in it, make sure it's the right length, and crimp it and be done. Again, the guys that want to get on here and argue with me about this stuff, you guys can do it. If you've been doing it your entire life a different way and it works, it works. This is how I've done it my entire life and it works. It's accurate. It's easy. That's what these videos were about. When I decided that, hey, I'm going to show people how I do it, I'm showing people how I do it. You know, I'm not showing every different way to do to do this because there are multiple ways there's multiple different steps again i could be tumbling instead of sonic washing i have a tumbler i just don't use it because this is faster it's easier and i can take them out of there let them sit for half an hour and i can size them and they can still be a little bit wet and it doesn't affect anything I can trim them and they be a little bit wet and it doesn't affect anything because I blow them out. If they're a little bit wet, I just blow them out and I make sure I do not put powder in them until they completely dry. So again, the people that were kind of putting some comments on here like, this is how it needs to be done, trust me. It's been done like this for a long time and I've done a lot of precision shooting. I've done a lot of shooting in general. I've, you know... I would hate to even guess amount of rounds that I have shot in my life that have been hand loaded 
brass picked up and then reloaded and then shot again and we have never had an issue with it so why would I start doing something different and why would I make it more complicated than it has to this works it's reliable it's worked my entire life and I'm probably not gonna change it now maybe maybe I'll buy it a kneeler someday for these 338 Lapua Magnum. I got a lot of brass for it. Maybe someday down the road I'll buy a kneeler when this brass is impossible to get, but I have a thousand rounds of this loaded up and probably another 200 rounds of brass just sitting here. They're not gonna go bad on the first load. So again, if you have anywhere you can get brass for a reasonable price, I would not waste my time or my money on getting an annealer because again a lot of this is a buddy of a buddy or a range sweep up or something of that nature and I cannot justify adding an extra step and the extra money to anneal it if you have an annealer and you do it that's good for you you made that investment good for you but I am not that being said again this is how I do it it is correct if you add extra steps and it works for you, you add extra steps and it works for you. But this is correct. This is how I do it. We'll see you guys later.